Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to dive into hypothesis testing problems in data science interviews. The hypothesis tests we are going to cover include binomial test, z-test, and t-test. By the end of this video, you will be able to understand what are different kinds of interview questions on hypothesis testing. What are the differences between those hypothesis tests and when to use each of them? The knowledge you gain from this video will help you solve those interview problems easily and accurately. Let's get started. There are three kinds of hypothesis testing questions in interviews. The first kind of questions are very basic. This kind of questions may appear in any part of a technical phone screen or an on-site interview to evaluate if a candidate has fundamental knowledge on hypothesis testing. Here are some examples. What are the differences between a z-test and a t-test? When to use a z-test versus a t-test? Given the data, how do you calculate the t-statistic or z-statistic? The second type of hypothesis testing questions typically ask together with A-B testing questions. A typical example would be the interviewer gives you a test result and asks you to calculate if the result is significant and how you would make launch decisions based on the result. This type of question requires you to understand both A-B testing and hypothesis testing, as well as how to use hypothesis testing in practice. If you are not familiar with A-B testing or you need a refresher on the topic, I have a great video covering the common ask A-B testing questions and answers. The last type of questions is using SQL query to calculate metrics and test statistics. For example, giving a table containing user behavior data, write a SQL query to get the average number of likes in control and treatment groups, then obtain the test statistic and tell if it's significant or not. The query itself is not difficult to write, but you will need to have a clear understanding of the formula to calculate the test statistic to solve the problem. Now you understand the three types of interview questions on hypothesis testing. Now let's dive into when to use each test and what are the differences between them. When I first learned those concepts, I felt it was pretty confusing and there seemed to be lots of things to remember. I then realized it's easier to understand and explain those concepts if I just make a flowchart. So here it is. This chart summarizes when to use a particular test. First of all, we want to know the metric we want to evaluate. If the metric we are interested in follows a Bernoulli distribution, we need to further check the sample size. For those of you who don't know, the Bernoulli distribution is a distribution with a random variable taking the value 1 with the probability p and the value 0 with the probability 1 minus p. A practical example is click-through probability. The proportion of users who click a button on a web page is p, and those who don't is 1 minus p. Similarly, clicks rate and the conversion rate can also be considered following a Bernoulli distribution. Another way to understand it is to see if what we want to test is a proportion or not. For example, percentage of users or pages. If we want to compare proportions of two groups, such as if there's a change in click-through probability, if we change the color of a button, we would go this route. If the metric does not follow Bernoulli distribution, for example, we want to find out how different two sample means are different from each other, then the first thing we want to check is the size of the sample. The magic number here is usually 30. 30 or above is considered as a large sample, and below it is considered a small sample. If it's a small sample, we need to make sure the probability is normally distributed in order to use a z-test or a t-test. You may wonder, do we care if the proportion is normally distributed for a large sample? We don't, because the central limit theorem tells us that the sample mean follows a normal distribution. We don't need to worry about whether or not the population is normally distributed for a large sample. If we have a large sample or a small sample from a normally distributed population, we need to also consider if the population variance is known to us or not. If it is, we could use a z-test. Otherwise, we'd choose a t-test. That's why, in reality, the z-test is not used as commonly as t-test, because it requires population variance to be known, 
and in lots of cases, we don't. Now it's clear to you when to select a particular test. I want to highlight two things to provide more clarity. The first thing is the difference between student t-distribution and the normal distribution. We use a t-test when the test statistic follows a student t-distribution on the null hypothesis. How would it be different from a z-distribution? Here's a diagram showing the comparison of t-distribution and z-distribution, or standard normal distribution. We observe that a t-distribution is more prone to error, it's more spread out and thicker in tails than a normal distribution. This makes sense because we do not know the standard deviation of the population. This also means that the t-distribution produces a wider interval than the corresponding standard normal-based confidence interval. Because if we don't know the standard deviation and we estimate it, we are less certain about our estimate. Note that the shapes are different for n less than 30 and n close to 30. This is related to another concept, degree of freedom. It is the number of pieces of information that can be freely varied without violating any given restrictions. That is, number of independent pieces of information available to estimate another piece of information. For example, if we have n data points, there will be n-1 independent values after we know the mean. We can see that as n increases, the t-distribution better approximates normal distribution. Actually, for large sample sizes, the t-test gives almost the same p-values and confidence intervals as the z-test. The second thing I want to clarify is why we don't use t-tests for proportions. We will mention a z-test or binomial test to compare proportions. And we didn't mention a t-test can do so. Why? The reason is that the test statistic doesn't have a t-distribution. It does approximately have a z-distribution. Let me explain. In a typical t-test, the t-statistics follow the form d over s, where d is the difference between means and s is an estimated standard error of d. Because of central limit theorem, when sample sizes are sufficiently large, a statistic like d, which is the difference between means, is very asymptotically normally distributed and the standardized version of d, d over sigma of d, will be asymptotically standard normal. There is another theorem called Slutsky's theorem states that as long as the denominator s converges in probability to that unknown standard error sigma d, then d over s should converge to a standard normal distribution. The typical one-sample and two-sample proportions tests are in the form so we have some justifications for treating them as asymptotically normal, but we don't have any justification to consider them as following a t-distribution. In practice, as long as np and n1-p are not too small, specifically when both are larger than 10, the asymptotic normality of the proportions test comes in rapidly. So theoretically, we don't use t-tests to test the proportions, and there's no good argument that t-distribution should be better than the z-distribution as an approximation to the distribution of the test statistic. But many people do use t-tests for testing proportions. Academically speaking, they are wrong. But in practice, the approximation obtained by using a t-test on Bernoulli data seems to be very good. Also, as we have mentioned earlier, as the sample becomes larger, using t-tests generates almost the identical confidence intervals and p-values compared with a z-test. So to summarize, using z-tests for testing proportions is theoretically correct, while using a t-test is wrong. But the result from a z-test and t-test do not have a significant difference, especially when the sample is large. So it's okay to use a t-test for proportions in reality. This is the part one of cracking hypothesis testing problems in data science interviews. In part two of the video, I will dive into some practical examples and show you how to solve them step by step. Stay tuned if you're interested in learning how to apply hypothesis tests in reality. As always guys, I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this video. Let me know if you have any questions. I will see you in the next video.